Hey, so you're brand new to Hunt Showdown and you think that you suck? Well, don't worry, because so do I. Yeah, I don't- Oh shit, there's a guy right next to me, dude! This video is gonna have everything you need as a new player in Hunt Showdown. First, we're gonna go through your settings and make sure those are all set up correctly. After that, I'm gonna give you a basic loadout to run with, then I'm going to show you how each weapon unlocks and how to get the specific one that you want. Lastly, we're gonna be going over the game goals and all the little mechanics inside of Hunt Showdown. All right, there's a lot to get through, so let's get started. Okay, so head up to your settings menu, make sure you're on the game tab. After that, you're gonna wanna make sure your field of view is all the way up, Go ahead and keep your control scheme at Hunter. For sensitivity, you can go ahead and do whatever fits for you. That's all different for everyone. I would recommend leaving down the aim down sights multiplier at one or all of them. For the miscellaneous settings, I turned all mine off, but if you are new, it might be helpful to use the show tutorial hints and show additional hint banners. You might want to check those on for a little bit. Okay, on the HUD tab, um, I would turn down the chat box and compass just a little bit. That's the settings I use and I seem to really like them. Um, and then when you scroll down, I would check all of these except for auto hide ammo display. Pretty much what this will do is it'll get rid of most of your HUD as you're playing when you don't need it, when you're like running and looking for people out in the fields and stuff. But you'll always have your ammo count on just so you can kind of reference down if you're about to go in a fight and be like, okay, I'm full ammo, I'm not full ammo. Um, but that's what I would do. Okay, and the audio is pretty simple. Um, I would leave the master as high as possible, keep the SFX all the way up, you can turn music or whatever. But for voice chat mode, make sure it is either push to talk or mute. Never have it at continuous or anything else, just because you want to know when you're talking in game because it's proximity chat and everyone else can hear you with within a certain amount of meters. I think it's about 20 meters, I could be wrong on that. Now on the graphics tab, make sure your resolution's good, you're playing a full screen, your render resolution scale is at 100. Pretty much for this tab, you do whatever you need to do to make sure your computer can run it and have at least 60 frames. Also, you're gonna wanna turn off effect quality. Just turn it off completely. It looks nice, but it's, it's better to have it off and not see all these special effects while you're shooting because it, you know, vision and sound is the biggest part of this game. For the performance stats, you can put it on basic if you want to see your ping and FPS. Alright, the biggest part of this is you want to make sure your V-Sync is off if you can handle that, depth of field, and motion blur. You want to turn all those off. And then after that, you want to make sure your max FPS is at least 60. I put mine all the way up to 144. Okay, for uh, key configuration, there's not much to go over here, um, except for when you get down to interact, bandage, and stop burning. I recommend putting those all in one key just to make sure that when you're in that split second battle and you're burning and you need to put it out, it's always the same key. And then also you want to get really familiar with your dark sight key and put it on a key that's easy to use. It's very important. Okay, now head over to roster. Um, I'm going to be giving you a very simple loadout, something to use that's beginner friendly. And then now, just to show you, this is where you recruit hunters. You can only have five characters at a time, but when you recruit a hunter, you can always get a free one, or you can go up in price to get a better geared hunter. And then also, after every game, you'll get a free reshuffle, and that'll give you new hunters to use. Okay, and now that you have your hunter, I want you to look at the health. Every hunter in the game has 150 health and you can't go over that. The big bars here represent 50 health and the small ones represent 25 health. Okay, and for the weapon slots. So think of it as you get a total of four weapon slot points. Every large weapon, all the main rifles and shotguns will represent three rifle points and that's all you can use. If you select a large rifle, that'll take up three of your four points, leaving you with one. Um, and then one point guns are usually the pistols. So with a large rifle, you'll have three points in the pistol, that'll be one, there's your four total points. But that also means you can use two medium slot weapons. So for example, you can use this hand crossbow and a Winfield Vandal, that'll equal four points still, and you can use both of those. Okay, now for the actual loadout I wanna give you. Start by using the Winfield. The Winfield's a very easy rifle to use and it's really good for learning the game. So that'll be a three point weapon. Using your last point, I would use the Nagant M1895. Okay, over to the tools. These are very specific items that you can use after every game if you survive. You're gonna wanna start by using the med kit. It's the most important item. After that, grab the knife. You're gonna wanna bring a med kit every single game. And then the knife is also very good if you don't have a bayonet or something else like that. 
All right, for the consumables, those are items that can have a one-time use. For a beginner loadout, I would recommend bringing the dynamite stick and a vitality shot for extra health. Okay, so this is a pretty cheap build that I would use every game until you get the hang of it, and then you can start using different guns and different items. I need to go over traits real quick. Um, these are basically just like perks that you get that you can attach onto your character. I'll go deeper in detail on this on a video I'll release next week. And just so you know, you get the trait points by um, having your character survive a mission and getting XP on that character. It's very important to note though, that when you die in Hunt, you lose everything you got, all your trades, all your guns, and the character, but it won't um, affect your rank or your prestige. None of that will change, you'll just lose the character stats. And lastly, don't be scared to die and hunt. It happens all the time, it's part of the game. I do it all the time. Sometimes I kill myself, you know? Now it's time to learn how to unlock weapons. So if you go to the store, you'll see that this Mosin the Gant unlocks at rank 72, and I'm only rank 66. So that's one way to unlock weapons, just by leveling up and keep playing. But once you unlock that weapon, you can get the variants by playing and using that weapon to get XP on the gun. One reason I recommend you guys using the Winfield is because it has so many different variants and it's super easy to unlock, low XP, and you get to try different variants throughout the Winfield. And if the Winfield's not your gun, you can use the Vitelli. You unlock it super early and it's a very easy bolt action rifle to use. I still use it at time to time, I actually really like the gun. Um, and it comes with a Deadeye and a Bayonet variant, which are both super useful for different situations. Okay, and then before we get into the gameplay, I would recommend going to the training tab and doing the basic, advanced, professional. Um, it really helps you get a base idea of the game, um, a good sense of what's going on. Also, you get a bunch of the in-game currency blood bonds. Those are the ones that you have to buy with real money. Um, and then you can use those to buy gun skins and also character skins if you'd like. All right, for the second half of the video, we're gonna be doing a game overview. So we're gonna go over that you need to gather clues, how to find the boss, how to kill it, then how to banish and protect it, and then finally, how to extract. And there's so much to Hunt Showdown that I can only go on the surface level and give you the basic ideas and a few tips along the way without making this video like 30 minutes. All right, so you got your loadout and you're ready to play. I do recommend that you play with friends. It is so much better to either have a, uh, a duo or a, even if you can, a trio. Hi, I'm the duo. Hi, me, Trio! If you don't have people to play with, you can go ahead and leave your Steam ID down in the comments and maybe you'll find someone to play with down there. And now it's time to ready up. You're finally in the game and the first thing you want to do is check your map to see where you spawn and then start looking for clues with your dark vision. I do this every game no matter if it's double hunt or single hunt. Every compound will have at least one clue. Once you get the clue, it'll X out a part of the map. You keep finding clues until you have all three and know where the final boss location is. One quick tip, if the clue is empty and looks like this, that means an enemy has already taken it and they might be nearby. And also, if the clue is red and it looks like this, that means that enemies are super close to you, so get ready to fight. Alright, and remember when I told you to bring a knife? This is when you use it. You don't ever want to shoot your gun inside of Hunt Showdown unless you're shooting at people. You want to use your knife to kill horses, zombies, anything in your way that you can. It's the best weapon to use to keep silent. The number one thing that'll get you killed inside of Hunt Showdown is how loud you are. And if you are new and watching this video, I guarantee you are too loud inside of Hunt Showdown. Gunshots can be heard all the way across the map, no matter where you are. So on your very first shot, everyone already knows where you're at. You should also know that each game has the possibility of having 12 people in the lobby, including yourself. So just be cautious. Also, you want to avoid things like birds and ducks, horses, hives, emulators, and hellhounds. All of those are really loud and can give up your location. Birds will even fly in the direction that you're going, letting people ahead of you know that you're coming. And if you follow these tips, little guy, one day you might just be like me. Killing an emulator, and then landing a clean headshot. Okay, so let's say for some reason you somehow lived and you found where the boss is at. Now what do you do? 
The best way to kill the boss is silently, by using weapons that are found around the compound. It'll take some practice being able to kill the boss with melee weapons, but trust me it's definitely worth it. You can use axes, sledgehammers, shovels, anything like that that you find around. You want to be careful of your stamina level, and then alternate between you and your partner. It's probably the best way to do it. Each of the three bosses are unique and have their own abilities and special interactions, so it will take practice to learn all of those. I'm also working on a boss video, and that should be up in a couple weeks after my loadout video, yeah. so be on the lookout for both of those. Found. Congrats, you killed the boss, little yeah. guy. Now right, it's time well, to banish it and get ready for people to come. Here. As soon as you banish, everyone will know where you're at and will start heading your way to steal the bounty. This is now the time to turn into Rambo He's and start this. popping heads. I hit his head, I hit as soon head. as the boss is done banishing, that's when you can pick up the bounty and use your dart sight to see if there are any enemies around. Now let's say that you don't get all the clues in time or find the boss, but someone else starts banishing it. That's when you look at your map and decide to go steal the bounty. In this situation, me and my partner decided to go in through the back window, sneak around, and get some kills to steal the bounty. After a little battle, I revived my friend, we picked up the bounty, and decided that was the time to escape while people were behind us. We made sure to use the dark side to be able to see where they were, and we head the opposite direction to the extract. While you're on your way out, you want to use the vision to make sure that you're safe. Always check when you don't feel safe. One quick tip is that when you're chasing people that have the bounty, you can see them by holding in your dark sight key and looking at the lightning in the sky. They will be directly underneath where the lightning strikes. Also, you can look at your map and wait for the little ping to go to show where they're at. Alright, so you did everything. You found the clues, you killed the boss, and now you're on your way to your extract. Be careful, some people like to camp there, but other than that, you hold your 30 seconds down and you're ready to go. Alright, I think that uh, kind of wraps up the broad overview for brand new players to hunt showdown. I'm going to be making a bunch more videos like this going into different details. I'm hopefully going to be releasing videos every Friday since that's my day off and it should work and line up. Um, if you really enjoy this game and you want to learn more, please subscribe, tell your friends, let them know. Um, any feedback would be appreciated. And thanks for watching. Yeah, I just shot. Oh, okay.